year after uh, the 40-some states joined the Common Core, we did a survey of teachers to look at their attitudes with respect to uh, the upcoming Common Core, and we found good news. The 90-some percent had read them, they felt supportive of them, they liked the idea of Common Core standards, so we had a great deal of support. But one question led to a set of results that foreshadow why we're having this conversation today, and that was that the majority of those teachers suggested that they felt the new Common Core state standards in math were not much different from what they had been doing all along. And therefore, it wouldn't require much change in order for them to adopt in the new Common Core standards. Well, that is no longer some three years later. We know this the case. And so what I'd like to talk to you about are four areas in which major change needs to take place if we are to successfully implement these Common Core state standards. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first one has to do with instructional time. It's one of the most important resources teachers have uh, to allocate what amount of time over the school year they spend on each of the different topics in mathematics. And the problem is there's little guidance for the teachers, and so what results is what you see here. Each of these columns, there are eight of them, represents a particular grade, one through eight. There are two bars within each column. The one to the left is a result of a study we did over hundreds of teachers having them record on a daily basis what content they covered. And this shows how they allocated that time across the year in the 10 big topics from the Common Core. And the column to the right, or excuse me, the bar to the right within the column is what the experts say should be being done in order to adequately cover that topic. I draw your attention to grades three, four, and five. It's easy, it's the blue. That's fractions, one of the single most important topics in the early curriculum, the one that causes the most difficulty for students, the one that has to be mastered in order for students to move on to things like algebra. Look at the blue for the teachers and look at the blue for the experts. Teachers are allocating about half the time in third and fourth grade that the experts suggest would be necessary in order to adequately cover those topics. And since time is an incredible resource in this context, this is a major difference that you see. A second area where change is necessary is that the teachers themselves uh, indicate by self-report that their knowledge of mathematics is not where it needs to be. In fact, what you see here for fourth and fifth grade teachers, where fractions is a major topic, about 75% say they are well prepared to teach that academically. But look at the one that has to do with number sets and concepts, which is the background in order to do fractions in the correct way. What you have is less than 40% of the teachers indicating they feel well prepared in that area. The next slide shows you what is the case for middle school. Middle school is probably that part of the curriculum which is, uh, from the standards, is mostly going to change the most. And what you see here is algebra is the dominant theme through those grades, and you have half the teachers indicating knowledge, self-reported again, that they feel prepared to be able to teach linear equations, the dominant theme in those grades around the algebra. The third area that major change is required and has to do with where these teachers come from. Recent graduates of these teacher preparation programs simply are not getting an adequate background in mathematics to be able to teach the Common Core. We did a study involving international 20 countries, and we looked across those countries and found the 40 programs, which were the most, uh, the highest performing programs. And we looked at and abstracted from those 40 programs what it was that they required their students to take while they were in school preparing to be teachers. And what we found, nine courses were taken by virtually all of the teachers in those top performing programs worldwide. And what we then said is with those nine courses, six are mathematics, this is middle school teachers, and three are related to the teaching of mathematics, we then found and applied that principle to the United States and only one-third of the future teachers some four years ago are being taking those courses as part of their preparation. Whereas in Russia and Taiwan, virtually all of those teachers are taking those courses. But when you break it down further, you come up with a startling result. Uh, within the United States, across 83 public private universities that we sampled, we found that among the top programs, 80% of the students took those courses. That's the good news. But the bottom 25% of the programs in this country, 
only about 10% took that kind of coursework. And here's the startling statistic, that those programs in that bottom quartile produce 60% of all future middle school teachers of mathematics in the United States because they are large institutions that turn out large numbers of students, filling our system with teachers inadequately prepared to teach the common core. The last area has to do with textbooks, instructional materials. Amber alluded to that problem. But I want to show you some data that actually shows just how bad those textbooks currently in use across the country line up with the Common Core State Standards in Mathematics. Here's a series, one of the most popularly used series in the United States. Uh, it's a dominant one. And this is a series that covers grades K through five, those six grades. When we look at each of those grades and see what number of standards should be covered according to the Common Core, and then add those together, we end up with 231. Then when we look to see grade by grade which ones are appropriately placed at that particular grade that they should be according to the Common Core, we find only 166 of them covered, leaving about 30% of the standards that should be covered appropriate to a grade level not being covered by this textbook series a serious omission, if you will. The second way you can look at this alignment issue is to say, well, look, if you look at those numbers up there below and above grades, those books are covering a lot of other material. And what happens in that particular case is that only about 30% of the book deals with what should be being dealt with. Put another way, if a teacher follows the textbook, what's gonna happen is the kids will be led far afield from what they should be studying at that particular grade level. This just shows for grade five. You can see at the 40, only 25 are covered. And look at all the standards that are covered in grades two, three, five, six, seven, eight, four. All those other grades are being covered. Well, this is what it looks like if you try to map it onto one picture. It's chaos. The gray shaded area represents what should be done according to the common core. All those circles that are not in the gray area represent a waste of time for the kids. If they follow those books, they will simply not focus on what they should be focusing on at that particular grade level. And that brings us finally to the slide that I showed you to start with, which is the slide that shows how the time is allocated. And now I've added a third line, which is the textbook. Look again at third, fourth, and fifth, where they were well behind the teachers and look at how close their alignment of instructional time matches the textbook. And so what we have is the answer to the question of what's guiding the teachers are a set of textbooks with are badly aligned to the common core, which could only lead to disaster, and hence that's why I've suggested the title, Major Things and Why Things Need to Change in order to successfully implement the common core. Thank you.